Do you want to lose that excess body weight but aren't sure where to start? In this video, I'm breaking down everything you need to know about cutting. From what cutting is, to the types of cuts, how long to cut for, and some killer tips to make your journey easier. Stick around till the end for some valuable tips and tricks to make your cutting journey way easier. So what even is cutting? Cutting means decreasing your calorie intake below your maintenance level to lose fat while preserving as much muscle mass as possible. There are two main types of weight loss approaches. First, the slow and steady route. This lasts several months, aiming for 0.5 to 1 pound of weight loss per week. Slow cuts help you keep more muscle while losing fat. The idea here is to make gradual changes to your diet and lifestyle that can be maintained over a longer period. This approach minimizes the stress on your body and helps you stick to your routine without feeling overly restricted or deprived. The other type of cutting is the mini cut. As the name suggests, it usually takes from four to eight weeks and is more aggressive than a slow cut. This is definitely not a long-term solution. It should be used as a tool to get rid of a couple of pounds quickly before switching back to maintenance when you reach your goal. The goal has to be realistic and sustainable though. You can't expect to super crush your diet, lose a bunch of weight, and then just stay there like it's no big deal. It sadly doesn't work like that. Mini cuts are great for a quick fix, but remember, they require more discipline and can be harder on your body. Now, you might be wondering, how long should your cut be? This depends on your end goal and what type of cut you are doing. Set a realistic goal and try to get to it. Generally, the slower, the better. This method is more sustainable and healthier in the long run. If you aim to lose a significant amount of weight, planning a slow cut over several months is usually the best approach. It gives your body time to adjust and helps prevent muscle loss. What do you do when you stop losing weight even while still in the same calorie deficit as before? This is very common. As you lose weight, your body needs fewer calories to maintain your current weight. That's why you'll have to decrease your calories over time even more. Another reason is that your NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, decreases. NEAT is basically the stuff that you do on a daily basis without even thinking about it, like fidgeting and other small movements. When you're in a calorie deficit, your body tries to preserve as much energy as possible, so you subconsciously stop fidgeting and generally become a little lazier. These calories that you burned previously from NEAT could have been the difference maker between losing the weight and just being in maintenance. Always keep this in mind. Now, let's talk about some common mistakes. The first mistake I see people make most of the time is cutting their calories way too drastically, right at the start of their cut. Then, they have no more room to decrease the calories later when they hit a plateau. You should not be losing more than 1% of your body weight per week. If you are, it probably means that your calorie deficit is too big. You should be in a calorie deficit of roughly 250 to 500 calories per day. This manageable deficit allows for steady weight loss while keeping you fueled for your daily activities and workouts. The next mistake that is very common is not tracking your calories properly or just not tracking at all. You should always be tracking your calories when you are cutting. This is especially true if you have never tracked your diet in your life. When you get more experience, you will be able to roughly estimate how many calories are in the food that you are about to eat, even without counting the calories. But even people who are experienced and can basically eyeball it are still tracking their calories. Precision matters when you're aiming for a specific goal, so don't skip this step. Now, let me tell you what to do when you mentally feel like you can't continue your weight loss journey anymore. After you have dieted for a good amount of time, and you feel like you can't really keep it up for much longer because you just feel completely out of it. It's time to switch to maintenance for a couple of weeks. By doing this, you can mentally reset, eat some more food for a bit, and then get ready to continue your cut. It's also a great opportunity to recalculate your maintenance calories to make sure that you won't be stuck in the future. Taking a break can help you recharge and come back stronger. 
The next question that a lot of people have is, do I need to do cardio when cutting? Well, you don't have to do cardio to lose weight, as it's just calories in and calories out. But, I would highly recommend you to do so, as it provides a lot of benefits. When you're doing your standard cardio session, like on a treadmill or something, you're not burning that many calories, so you shouldn't rely on cardio to be the difference maker in your calorie deficit. It's much easier to cut out a little bit more food than to try to out-cardio a bad diet. You might have seen those videos where people eat 10,000 calories in a day and then try to burn the 10,000 calories the same day. If you haven't seen them, I highly recommend you to watch some of them, as it will show you how bad of an idea it is to try to out-cardio a bad diet. As I promised at the start of the video, I'm going to tell you some tips that will make your cutting phase way easier. Tip number one, start eating low-calorie, high-volume foods. Stuff like spinach and zucchini are a lifesaver when it comes to dieting because high-volume, low-calorie foods will be highly satiating, so you are less likely to feel hungry or binge on something unhealthy. Tip number two, keep your protein intake high. Protein helps to prevent muscle loss and is also very satiating. Aim for at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. This will support muscle maintenance and repair, keeping you strong and full. Tip number three, don't buy junk food. If you know that you have some junk food at home, it's just a matter of time before you have a weak moment and binge on a full bag of some high-calorie snack. If you don't have it at home, then you simply can't cheat. Out of sight, out of mind. Tip number four, weigh yourself every day in the morning. If you weigh yourself only once per week, it might not accurately represent your current weight due to water fluctuations and stuff like that. By weighing yourself every day and writing down the number each day, you can then average out the real weight at the end of the week. This will give you a more accurate number in the long run. Tip number five, track your protein intake. This might seem simple, and you might think you are hitting your protein goals no problem, but when you actually count it, you may find out that you are missing out. Don't sleep on the simple things. Consistency is key. Tip number six, have most of your carbs before and after your workout. If you are really deep in a cut and your energy levels are very low, you want to utilize your carbs to give you as much energy for your workout as possible so you can perform your best. After your workout, carbs are also important, especially for replenishing your glycogen stores. Tip number seven, be patient. It's going to take time for you to lose a significant amount of weight. Stick to what you have learned in this video and you will get there over time. Just don't give up. Consistency beats intensity in the long run. Tip number eight, avoid liquid calories. This is the exact opposite of bulking. When you are cutting, you don't want to consume your calories in a liquid form, as you will be hungry way faster than if you consumed a proper non-liquid meal. Opt for solid foods that take longer to digest and keep you full longer. Tip number nine, caffeine timing. Caffeine can be a great tool for weight loss if you use it the right way. Caffeine has appetite-suppressing effects, so you might want to reserve your caffeine for when you feel really hungry. Either coffee or energy drinks can work just fine, but remember, no liquid calories, so go for sugar-free versions. Tip number 10, eat a good amount of fiber. Fiber is very satiating, so you will feel satisfied after your meal, plus it will help your digestion. Foods like vegetables, fruits, and whole grains are excellent sources of fiber. Now you know everything that you need to start your weight loss journey. If you have any more questions on the topic, ask them in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. If you learned something, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. For more simplified tips, check out the playlists on the screen right now. Thanks for watching, and let's crush those goals together.